I don't think it's about making things easy for the group. Maybe sometimes it is, right? And sometimes that's important. But I think that our value as professionals, as people um, trying to contribute our craft and skills here, is that we're, we're able to take others and ourselves into the more difficult places. And I don't mean that, you know, masochistically or anything like that. It's just the premise would be, if we need new thought, if we need breakthrough, then some of that breakthrough only comes because we're able to go into those more troublesome places with one another. There has to be some scouts. There has to be some wild cards. Um, the, the thought that came to me as I read that section of your book was that I've heard it spoken that um, if you don't dream, and I'm talking about physical dreaming now at night, if you don't dream, you go insane. And there's something to me also about if we don't have rebels, there's actually an insanity. Just because you're feeling as if you're not appreciated doesn't mean that you're not appreciated. And to begin to look for evidence that other people are like sitting, literally sitting up when you speak or their eyes are brightening when you begin to challenge a long set idea, or they come up to you afterward and say, thank you for saying that, you know? So just because you experience an initial, um, perhaps a sense of isolation, that may not be true. Rebels are everywhere. Creative spirits are everywhere. And those who care deeply about the organization are everywhere. The other perspective is that you're not the keeper of the idea, you're the keeper of the journey. This idea will have a journey. It started with a question, it continued with an insight, it went on with brainstorming, with contributions from everyone, and it's going to go on, be implemented, and then have another version, two, three, four. The journey is endless, and you're just a temporary bearer of this journey. If you see yourself like this, you will start to hear everyone's contribution more acutely because you won't be offended when they try to change your idea. You, you will think that you want to thank them for it. The, doing it together gives you the ideas are stronger. Right. Uh, you know, the resistance is less. It's more meaningful work. Mm -hmm. I think someone else talked about how lonely people really are. And so being part of something, a sense of belonging, right. how that brings meaning to work. Yes. The single most important thing you can do in any interaction, whether you are speaking to one person or you are in a room of 300 people speaking, is to reduce the anxiety of your listener. Anything that you can do to ratchet down any tension or worry is an extremely good investment. The biggest piece of persuasion which is even beyond stating our feelings, is to pay attention to the objections that are blocking us. That is by far the most persuasive thing we can teach ourselves to do, to take our opponent really seriously. A secret weapon is the following. When you are appreciative and grateful for those around you, even if initially they don't agree with you, the likelihood of them moving towards you and towards your idea increases bit by bit by bit. And you both know that it takes time. It takes time for rebellious ideas to take hold, mm -hmm. for an organizational structure to move. It's, you know, it's like turning the Queen Mary, it's, you know, these micro movements, little by little by little, and you can help a team or a department move into a new direction. The capacity to be stronger within oneself is available to us irrespective of what our history has been, what our corporate history has been, the bad choices we've made in the past, the failures we've had, and or the um, mistaken thoughts we've had about our ability to make change happen, right? I mean, there's so many famous examples. You know, Abraham Lincoln, how many thousand times did he fail before he became president? You know, that we have to be willing to see that that or believe that we have capacity at any time, irrespective of what's happened in the past. Having an idea is not about keeping it intact. It's about keeping it in motion. It's about moving it from one perspective to another, from one point to another, and building it up. 
And every time you think that the idea and you are one and the same, you're wrong. I think what's really struck me is how many people of our various speakers from really around the world, mm -hmm. unprompted, mentioned one particular word, and that word was? Empathy. Empathy. Mm. Everybody's talking yes. about the importance of empathy. And what I like about that is that in today's world, people are always talking about change as a technology mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're very close to Silicon Valley mm -hmm. here, and uh, it's all about bringing, you know, designing new apps and writing new code, and that's all important, and of course, things I can't do. Uh, but I, I really like this idea of returning back to the essence of what we are, mm -hmm. which is we are human beings mm -hmm. relating to each other. Mm -hmm. And what I also like about the empathy angle is it reminds me of something that I would always say, well, I didn't always say it, I learned this in my own uh, change agent journey, is that organizations don't change. No people do exactly you like and you respect people who are truthful to you i think that's without a doubt probably um the most important thing um another important thing i think is that you learn from mistakes uh, i say in my book you don't want to keep going up the down escalator or down the up escalator you just don't want to keep you don't mind making mistakes but you don't want to keep making uh the same mistakes do you and maybe the next thing is again that um there's so many things that are important, but, but for me, I really like to surround myself with someone who helps me be good, someone who helps me be a better person, who helps me be a, a better uh, leader. There was an article written years ago, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who the author was, but it said that good followers make good leaders good. The biggest mistake that I've seen rebels make is they pitch their idea in terms of their own goals as opposed to the organization's goals or the team's goals. Right? Not that effective to stand up and say, here's why this direction is going to make my job better. It's much more compelling if you can articulate a rationale for why this rebellious idea that you have will advance the team or will help the organization. And I think that's just a, a big perspective-taking challenge, right? to step outside of, of your own objectives and the things that you want to accomplish and ask, what are other people trying to achieve? What will make this organization more effective, and how can I couch my idea within that broader framework? In the early days of my work here, we were more like rebels that, I mean, there is a famous uh, uh, advertisement, I think it's by William Lawson's Whiskey, where you have these Irish rugby players with kilts, and at the end they show what's under their kilt, and they silence the other team completely, and the, the tagline is, no rules, great, great wish, whiskey, William Lawson's. But that's how we behaved in the early days of our innovation initiatives. And the result of that is that you scare away uh, all the people in your organization because you, you try to blow them away and you don't listen to them and you don't try to connect with them. You try to create disruption and that's exactly not what you, what you have to do. They're too, they think too much, they feel too much, they say too much, they're, um, you know, it's, it's their too muchness is, is what is criticized by other people. So I think it would be good to reframe that and say you think a lot and you think deeply and sometimes that gets in your way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it keeps, it's for some people they have trouble sleeping. I mean, it's, it, you can't turn it off. You know, I've got clients who say I can't turn off my thinking. And I worry, there's a lot of worrying sometimes that happens with the reinforced mind because of all the thinking. You have a creative mind, you're, you're capable of, of thinking of all sorts of things that could go wrong, you know, because your mind is, is so full and so active. What defines a wild pack is they are all working on some sort of project that really demands their problem solving abilities, creative cognitive problem-solving abilities. So as a result, those people in your wild pack understand the inherent challenges that that entails. They understand the inherent uncertainty and excruciating self-doubt 
that will arise with such a creative project. I know a wonderful mentor, Jane Dutton, who studied organizational change for years. And she said one of the most important things she learned was if you're a change agent, you've got to build a micro community of like minded people. Some allies who may share your values or your vision. And Carmen, this is very much like what you did, I think, in, in your government days of, of building that informal alliance of rebels. The goal is to start socializing your ideas very gently with different people and see how they react. Anyone who says immediately that you're crazy, obviously, is probably not your first <laughs> ally, although somebody <laughs> whose perspective you want to hear. But I think you're looking for the people who sit and listen and say, that's really interesting. I've never thought that way before. Or about this, or where could I read further about this particular viewpoint on the world? And slowly but surely, you can start to build up that group of people who are open to your perspective. Well, I think the, the most important thing that I could tell a rebel at work is to say you're not alone. The data show that if you have even one ally, one friend, it's enough to make you realize actually people supporting me here. And it becomes a major driver of your motivation and really the reason to persist in the face of difficulty. So if, if there's only one piece of advice, it's fine, not even that whole micro community, but just a single ally to support you and bad ideas around. And that might be enough to get you over the hurdles.